Hey, how's it going guys? Today I'm checking out the EC Villa 360 laptop, available for around $250 on Amazon. So there's really not too much around the box here, except on the side, you can see the specs here. And it's got like a Intel Cherry Trail Z8350, 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of internal storage, and 11.6 inch 1920x1080 IPS screen. So the packaging is really straightforward. You get like this uh, DC port outlet to recharge the laptop, then the laptop itself inside, and you get a user manual. The laptop itself doesn't weigh too much. It's uh, 2.25 pounds to be more exact, and it's a little over half an inch thick. I'll have the listing uh, down below where it shows the full dimensions. On the left side, you get the DC port to recharge the tablet or laptop. And then there is a little like LED light that flashes when it is charging. USB 3.0, a mini HDMI. And then this really isn't anything here from what I can see. It's not really a button. On the right side, you have this on and off power thing. This will either turn off or turn on the keyboard and the trackpad. There's the power button, a micro SD card slot, USB port, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Underneath there's four rubber tacks to keep the tablet in place on a curved surface, and there are speakers on each side. So I went ahead and downloaded some stuff on here, and out of the box there's about 43 gigs available out of 57, and again you have that micro SD card slot to add some more space. Using the trackpad, there are buttons on here to left and right click. And it is multi-touch too, so you can like zoom in by like pinching out, and then if you pinch in, it zooms out. Might be a second delay there. So a few things before I forget. The, the t laptop itself is just made of uh, hard plastic. It just feels like cheap plastic, honestly. Looks nice. You might not expect it to be, but it is just plastic. The keyboard is pretty responsive too. Uh, I'm just testing it out here, and the screen is pretty nice and vibrant. It's a 1920 by 1080 IPS display, so we're going to check out a video in just a moment. And it doesn't seem like there's much, yeah, there's about no delay on the keyboard. It's pretty responsive, and there is a bit of a feedback on it. It's not completely flat. I have the task manager open here. I was just playing a video quickly just to see how much RAM would be taken up. It seems like the CPU is... Uh, is bottlenecking or throttling? I can't remember the right word, but it's it's constantly being played at 100% while the RAM is still not hitting four gigs fully. So I would I would have thought that maybe four gigs of RAM would be limiting, but it seems like the CPU is limiting more than the RAM. You're able to use the split screen function relatively well. Of course, if you so here's something that's interesting. Uh, 1080p videos uh, from my videos that I play run pretty well, but when I played like another video with like uh, 60 FPS, it's not gonna be able to handle it. And there was another video I was looking at, some like stand up guy or like late night show, and the video was actually lagging. Let me try it out again really quickly. I can't show you in the video because I don't wanna get copyrighted. Okay, so I got done watching this video. Uh, I don't really watch these guys at all, but it's. It's just a little laggy when he moves around his arm, his hands and everything, so it's just not smooth at all. So that's kind of unfortunate. And then 1080p at 60 FPS doesn't work. Let's take a look at 720 at 60 FPS real quick. So videos in 720p 60 FPS were uh, a little hard to say. I mean, it's still, I noticed a bit of lag, but I think it could have also been due to the fact that I was interacting with the screen. So that's one thing to consider and keep in mind. So when you have it at full screen, don't move your, your keyboard around or mouse and it won't lag. But when you do move it around and interact, or when you're not in full screen and you kind of look around, the video starts to lag a little more, which is pretty unfortunate. I could see this being a deal breaker for some people because you're not able to watch all videos in 1080p smoothly. And that's a big problem because it's like, you know, you have this nice screen, 1080p. You can have it in, in tent mode, which I have here, which is very useful to watch videos. Oh, and for Skype calling because the camera is right up there. It's it's in a weird spot when you have it normally because it's not all the way down here, so the position is going to look off. Going back to it, not being able to play all videos in 1080p is going to be a deal breaker for some people. And look at that. So this is how it's positioned uh, down here, so it's like looking upwards. You can, you can change it upwards 
if you want. But I think the best thing is to have it in tent mode when you're making a Skype call or something. And the camera quality is all right. I mean, of course, I'm not expecting too much. Uh, it looks washed out too. So the camera's there and so this is the camera and the camera quality. Quality, it's again, it's just washed out, so don't expect too much. Uh, still acceptable for a Skype call, take that how you will. Uh, you can move around too a little more compared to like a few other devices because it's like it's not as shaky or laggy when you're moving your arms around. First game I'm checking out here is Minecraft. And this is the free trial version, so we've got like 90 minutes to play it. And one thing I noticed is that when I start running, it the, the touchpad doesn't work for like a, a second or two, but then it starts to work. I'm not sure why it does that. Now down here it looks like uh, there is a drop in frame rate. I'm not sure if the video is able to pick it up or, or not, but yeah, it's not completely smooth. So to some people this can still be playable, but you can determine that on your own. I mean, I'm looking at the camera and it seems like it is picking it up or able to. Looks like there's something above me. Usually I guess this is better with a, a keyboard and or like a mouse than a trackpad. One other thing I noticed about the trackpad is that if you go from uh, top to bottom here, kind of like this, it'll minimize the tray. If you go just like that, it'll minimize whatever tray was up there. So that's pretty nice, uh, but I have seen it, like I have accidentally gone from top to bottom and it accidentally like uh, minimized some trays. So that's kind of unfortunate. And I'm not sure if you're able to change it in settings or not, but I'll probably take a look at that later. I almost forgot to mention that this is what the settings were, so everything was pretty much on, you could say. So I'm going to turn this stuff off, like fancy graphics, smooth lighting, and whatnot, to see if that'll do the trick to make it smoother. Okay, this is much smoother. Um, I'm not sure if I'm getting a consistent 60 frames, but it kind of feels like it. Yeah, not bad at all. So I guess if you lower the graphics and give it a moment, it'll go away, or it'll get much better. I mean, makes sense though. Next game we're checking out here is Asphalt 9. And so I was testing this out, and surprisingly it seems like it's playable. I'm surprised about that, and I'm not sure what it's telling me here to do a spin. And again, it is playable. There is a bit of slowdown. I have it to the lowest settings. Uh, or the default settings. I did change the resolution scale, if I, but nonetheless, I'm surprised that it can even play this. Uh, this is from the Microsoft Store. It's a free game, Asphalt 9. All right, so not bad overall. So my first impressions is that, yeah, this is kind of a little better than expected. I was disappointed in some areas, mainly when you can't play videos in 1080p without noticing a bit of stutter or lag. Uh, while you're watching them, it's not completely smooth, which is very unfortunate because it has a nice screen, so that's why. At the time of this video, you can get this for $241 because there is a $20 coupon code when you apply it, so just under $250. I'll have the link down below, and leave a like if you found this video helpful, and subscribe if you want to see more stuff on cheap laptops and tablets. As always, thanks for watching.